So let me now proceed and, and introduce our today's speaker, Christian Ast. It's very nice to have you here, Christian. Thank Thanks you. for accepting. Uh, so Christian, he did his PhD at the University of Wisconsin, Madison, 2003, uh, working on angular result photo emission spectroscopy, looking at electronic structure of bismuth um, surfaces. After that, he, he came back to Europe uh, via EPFL to Max Bock Institute of Solid State Research in Stuttgart, where he has been since 2005, and he is now a group leader at the Nanoscale Science Department. Uh, he also got one of these ERC consolidated grants in 2015. Uh, his group is focused on doing experiments on the smallest, smallest energy scales at the quantum limit, uh, which become dominant only at the lowest temperatures. And in order to better understand, for example, I mean, there are many topics, but for example, things like quantum transport, superconductivity, and the source of an if effect at the atomic scale. And uh, the title of Christian's talk today is Superconducting Quantum Interference at the Atomic Scale. And then without further ado, we look forward to your talk. The floor is yours, Christian. Oh, thank you, uh, Peter and uh, Rose, for the invitation, also for the kind introduction. Um, this is a very nice colloquium, and you usually only get such an audience in a plenary talk. Um, Okay, so like uh, Peter said, I want to talk about superconducting quantum interference at the atomic scale uh, using scanning tunneling microscopy and spectroscopy. So before I start, let me introduce the group. Okay, so I work in the uh, department of <coughs> Klaus Kern and uh, most of the work that I will present uh, today was done by Haunan and uh, Sujoy and also some of the work was done by Robert, um, Piotr and Max. Um, also, I want to acknowledge the uh, outstanding and incredible theory support that we get from uh, Joachim Ankerholt in Ulm uh, with uh, Bjorn and Ciprian and also Carlos Coevers and Alfredo Yelevi Yeati from Madrid. And we also have a collaboration with uh, Fabian Pauli in Augsburg, Wolfgang Belzig in Konstanz, and we also started recently working with um, Annika black Schaffer from Uppsala in Sweden. Okay, so now I have interference in the title and interference uh, basically needs coherence. And in our case, it is phase coherence in the tunnel junction. And uh, this is typically a problem because um, STM uh, is an inherently incoherent technique uh, because it operates in the dynamical Coulomb blockade regime where we have phase fluctuations. But if you look at the time scale of these phase fluctuations, uh, you can find actually, they are actually quite slow compared to a, a tunneling event. And um, if you are happy with a short time scale, uh, then uh, we can actually see coherent uh, interactions in, in, the, in, 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 in the tunneling process. And this is basically what we want to focus on. So to give you an example, uh, we take, um, uh, microwaves in a superconducting tunnel junction. Now this is taken at uh, 300 millikelvin in our Unisoku STM. We have a superconducting tip and a superconducting sample. So you see the coherence peaks here. This is a reference measurement. And now we introduce uh, microwaves at 75 gigahertz. And at low, uh, low intensity, you already see some replica corresponding to this frequency here. If you increase the intensity, you get more replica and the the, the, the peaks, they actually modulate around. And um, if you plot this on a more continuous scale, now uh, the x-axis is the bias voltage and the y-axis is the microwave intensity, you see the coherence peaks. And as you increase the intensity, you see a modulation um, of uh, these peaks. You see replica and you actually see an interference pattern where you have uh, constructive and destructive interference exchanging. So um, something, some part of this uh, tunneling process must be coherent. You have a coherent interaction with of the microwaves with the tunneling electrons within a tunneling event and uh, an incoherent superposition of different tunneling events that you can see here, for example, by the replica here and the overlap that you see here. So we have seen this uh, recently. There's also a group in Maryland that has seen this some time ago already, and also Katharina Franke's group has seen this recently as well. In the STM, there are many other examples. Uh, so this is quite a universal phenomenon that you get when 
charges are interacting with microwaves. Okay, so this is just an example. And um, so coherence is basically a prerequisite for many interesting phenomena in uh, quantum computing, quantum sensing, and so on. So uh, today I want to uh, give you, uh, basically talk about two points, um, two questions that we want to address. Uh, the first one is, can we realize coherent coupling through quasi-particle tunneling? Uh, and this would be a prerequisite for observing Rabi oscillations. And this is particularly challenging because you really need to isolate your, um, uh, your quasi-particle levels uh, very much from the environment to reduce uh, uh, interactions and coupling, hybridization, everything to an absolute minimum. Now, this has been uh, observed. These Rabi oscillations have been observed in ESR STM. So this is electron spin resonance STM in um, Chris Lotz's group and uh, Andreas Heinrich's group uh, recently uh, for uh, single spin systems. Now, single sp spins are a bit easier to decouple from the environment, um, uh, uh, rather easier than, than, for example, single quasi-particle levels. So, um, the second point that I want to uh, address is uh, concerned with um, a Cooper pair tunneling, not quasi-particle tunneling, but Cooper pair tunneling, the Josephson effect. And the question there is, can we realize a rudimentary phase sensitivity in the SDM, which is uh, basically an analogy to a superconducting quantum interference device, a squid, uh, which is shown here. Uh, an example from the Kovenhofen group, they have studied uh, quantum dots in a super connected to superconducting leads. And they put here a, a squid loop with a reference junction. And the question is, can we um, realize something similar uh, in order to uh, um, um, get yeah, some kind of phase sensitivity in the STM? And I will show you that this is actually possible. And I will show you that we, we will use this to detect uh, a pi junction uh, when we measure the Josephson effect through a yushiba rusinov state. Okay, uh, just, yeah, uh, as Peter said, just if you have any questions, please uh, uh, interrupt me. Okay, so let me start at the beginning. Um, now, you all know that uh, Richard Feynman said there's plenty of room at the bottom. And as Peter pointed out, we have been looking for new quantum limits. So in his words, we're basically looking for uh, the hatch and the bottom to go to the basement, yeah, um, to, to find a new, uh, level of quantum limit that uh, hasn't been there before and uh, try to um, understand that part. So how do we do that? Uh, we use a millikelvin STM, uh, which is an STM that is connected to a dilution refrigerator oper operating at uh, 10 millikelvin base temperature. We see the prep chamber here on the bottom and then the periphery uh, of the dilution refrigerator on the top. And this is uh, coupled or connected to a big concrete slab, which is um, floating in a, a big isolated box. So we have a really uh, nearly noise-free environment in order to study our um, uh, systems. And uh, from that, uh, we can readily uh, observe the, the basically the standard quantum limit in STM that uh, basically everybody reaches now at low temperature, um, uh, which is observing single atoms and molecules at, at the surface. This is an aluminum 100 surface and you nicely can see the resolved aluminum atoms and some uh, yeah, impurities at the surface. So, but going to low temperature introduces uh, uh, the, the, the next limit, which is uh, charge quantization, which is basically second quantization or quantum electrodynamics, uh, where the tunneling current is no longer a homogeneous flow of charges, uh, but actually uh, tunnels in quantized packages. This has some consequences that you can actually get um, uh, uh, interactions with the local electromagnetic environment. You have these phase fluctuations and um, uh, you observe characteristic features such as such these dips, which are due to this dynamical Coulomb blockade. Um, so, and, and then you can go uh, reach the next limit um, by constructing your tunnel junction such that you only have a single transport channel. Yeah, we've studied this. Uh, on aluminum, uh, basically tunneling between two aluminum atoms, uh, studying the 
um, the Josephson effect and the deviations from the standard Ambegao-Kabarato formula that uh, describes the, that that uh, models the critical current in uh, Josephson junctions. Um, but this is not enough because uh, even if you have a single single um, uh, uh, transport channel, um, you may still have a, a continuous band with many electron levels contributing to the um, tunneling current. For example, as shown here, you have continuous band, you have unoccupied states and occupied states, you apply a bias voltage, and then there are many electron levels contributing to, to the tunneling current. So the next limit that we are looking for is actually um, uh, reducing this tunnel junction to um, a, a single quasi-particle level in the tip and in the sample. So for that, we need a gap, and then we place a single electron or a single uh, quasi-particle level inside this gap. And <clears throat> when we apply a bias voltage, there's only these two energy levels contributing to the tunneling current. How do we do that? Uh, we need a conducting substrate and a gap and a single level. Yeah? So um, the way to do this is we take a superconductor, which is conducting, and it has an energy gap. Oops, sorry. Um, and uh, the challenge now is to, to place a single level inside the gap. And the way to do this is actually to take a magnetic impurity. Uh, this can be an atom or a molecule. Um, and then this magnetic impurity couples to the superconductor. We have some exchange coupling, and depending on the strength of this exchange coupling, uh, we produce a single uh, quasi-particle level inside uh, the superconducting gap. Yeah, so you have the gap here. Incidentally, the coherence peaks, they disappear. This is an important feature that, that uh, I, will, I will mention later on. Um, and we have this single energy gap. Yeah? Uh, this has been discussed by these three gentlemen, Yu, Shiba, and Rusinov, uh, in, in the 60s already. Uh, and therefore, these states are called Yu, Shiba, Rusinov states. I will call them Yu, Shiba, Rusinov states in the following YSR states or also Shiba states. Um, okay, so we have that. Um, one thing to mention here, which will also become important later on, that is that, uh, uh, like I said, uh, when we chain, when we modify the exchange coupling um, then uh, the energy of the Shiba state inside the gap changes. Yeah, we have the electron in the whole part here. As we increase the coupling, uh, the energies, the, the Shiba state moves towards zero, and then uh, it actually crosses zero. There is a quantum phase transition, and then these states, uh, the, the levels, they move away from zero again. Yeah. So what happens is that uh, we have... Um, a so-called free spin regime and a screen spin regime. So we have our superconductor and on the superconductor, we place uh, this impurity spin. And the beginning, it is free because the, the coupling is not very strong. And if we, when we move across the quantum phase transition, the, um, uh, we break a Cooper pair and one half of the Cooper pair actually excites the or occupies the uh, Shiba state which becomes the ground state, and this screens the spin of the impurity such that the total spin of the system becomes zero. Yeah? So what, really, uh, uh, what is really the hallmark of this quantum phase transition is that the total spin impurity plus superconductor changes from one half to zero. Yeah? And this will become important um, later on when we discuss the Josephson effect. Okay, so now uh, the best way to probe these um, uh, Shiba states on on surfaces is as a local probe, so we, we which is the STM in our case, and uh, to give you an overview that this uh, this has been done before, uh, first by Ali Astani in '97, uh, then a little bit later also by Eric Hudson in uh, Seamus Davis's group uh, on high TC superconductors. Also the Chua group in, in in China has done some work on that, and then a little bit later Katharina Franke has done a lot of nice works. Uh, uh, starting in 2011 and subsequently, and then more recently, more and more groups actually got interested in these um, <coughs> in these uh, Shiba states, um, uh, and so have we. So, and this is what I want to talk to you about in the following. So, our um, uh, 
favorite superconductor is vanadium 100 in this case we use vanadium tips and uh, vanadium samples you see the nice uh, square terraces here but you also see speckles so the the surface is never really quite clean um, if you zoom in we see an oxygen reconstruction a five by one oxygen reconstruction and um, uh, uh, these uh, blobs are actually uh, oxygen vacancies. So there are also a lot of defects. And uh, we can actually turn now this new essence into a virtue because it turns out that uh, some of these um, uh, defects actually show very nice Shiva states. Yeah, uh, Very sharp and uh, localized. Uh, you see one example here. Um, uh, we can fit them, which is shown in the red line here. But uh, you see there's a single Shiba state inside the gap, electron and hole part. Um, and uh, we actually believe that uh, we have a, a single spin one half impurity there that produces exactly one Shiba state, which actually makes the modeling later on a lot easier. So, but uh, I should mention here, uh, which I said before, the coherence peaks in this in the Shiba model are actually gone, but we still see coherence peaks here. And this uh, is for us an indication that we actually have a second transport channel through a uh, empty BCS gap, which still shows these Shiba states. Yeah. So in the, uh, uh, in the next few slides, this won't matter much, but it will actually play a, a role in um, when we study the Josephson effect later on. Um, so this is a phenomenon that basically happens almost everywhere uh, that we have these Shiba states, but we still see these um, coherence peaks, which indicate that there is more than one transport channel. Okay, also uh, we have many indications that, um, that we have a spin one half impurity to show, uh, demonstrate one of them. Uh, we measure the Shiba states in the magnetic field. Um, you see the coherence peaks here, the Shiba state here, coherence peak. Then we turn on the magnetic field, the, sh the superconductivity is quenched, and then a condo peak emerges, which you see here. And after a certain field, um, also the, the y-axis is nonlinear, I should mention, um, after we uh, increase the field, the, um, uh, the, the condo peak starts splitting into two peaks, and the, the critical field where this starts splitting indicates a condo temperature, which we determine to be about one Kelvin. Um, so um, everything here um, point is, is quite consistent and uh, points to a spin one half impurity. Okay, so back to the single quasi-particle quasi level tunneling, we now have a Shiba state in the sample. Uh, we need to place one in the tip and then we apply a bias voltage so that we, the overlap between these two levels uh, produces a tunneling current. Um, okay, so how do we do that? Um, the, uh, uh, the, we can actually very nicely and reproducibly produce a Shiba state in the tip by dipping our vanadium tip into the vanadium sample. This is a trial and error procedure, but it works quite well actually. And it works so well that we can um, write, a, a, have an algorithm uh, so that this is automated and we can say, uh, please put, uh, make a Shiba state at a certain energy inside the gap. And then the program, the algorithm will run and try until we get a Shiba state at a certain point uh, in, the, in, the, in the gap. And this actually works here. You see a histogram of Shiba states that we see in the, um, in the sample and uh, in the tip. Um, in the sample, we can say, okay, there is, there is a, a certain changes in the local environment since they are intrinsic defects. Uh, uh, the, the local environment is never quite the same. So they, uh, it's not so surprising that they actually vary inside the gap. And also the uh, preparing the tip in this way through dipping uh, produces Shiba states um, basically throughout the gap. This actually um, gives us quite a flexibility in studying the uh, behavior of these Shiba states inside the gap because there are differences actually. So um, <clears throat> um, let's look at the spectrum. We here have an empty gap. So we see the uh, coherence peaks here. Um, we move over a defect in the sample. We see 
Shiba state here, then we produce a Shiba state in the tip. We see another Shiba state here, and then we take that Shiba state and move over the exact same Shiba state that I showed you in the previous slide, like that. And then we see the coherence peaks, we see the two individual Shiba states, and we see a nice sharp uh, additional feature inside the gap, uh, which we attribute to uh, tunneling between these two Shiba states. Yeah? So this is uh, summarized in this graph here. Uh, you see that there's this new feature only uh, if you um, have a Shiba state in the tip and the sample. If I take one component away, this feature is gone. And this basically introduces a new quantum limit, uh, which is tunneling between two individual quasi-particle levels. Yeah, so uh, this looks rather asymmetric uh, because it's DIDV. It's more advantageous to look at this uh, in the current, actually, because in the current, we see a nice, uh, well-defined peak here. It's quite prominent, actually, uh, and <coughs> isolated in the spectrum. So if we, um, <coughs> sorry, if we zoom into this peak, we actually have a, a nicely isolated feature. We have zero current before and zero current after this peak, which indicates that we have isolated energy levels. Yeah? So the width of this peak is not uh, the intrinsic lifetime, but it is due to the interactions with the environment, finite bias voltage fluctuations and so on. So finite energy resolution. Um, and um, uh, the, it actually turns out that the intrinsic lifetime is about two orders of magnitude uh, sharper than, uh, than the peak here. And I will show you in, the, in a moment how we can extract the intrinsic lifetime, even if we don't see the, if we cannot observe the line width here. Um, uh, just, just as a side note, it actually turns out that because the uh, energy levels are so extremely sharp, we are actually probing uh, the P of E function, which is uh, uh, which models the interaction with the environment, you see a slight asymmetry, which is expected from this P of E function. So this is actually a direct measurement of the P of E function in the dynamic Coulomb brocade regime. Okay, but um, now moving on, what I want to um, uh, show you is is that uh, is, is this coherent coupling in the end, or the Im emergence of coherent coupling. And uh, for that, we, we need to change the, 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 the distance between tip and sample. But to understand this process a little bit better, we have to look at uh, uh, not just at, at the tunneling process, we also, we, we also have to look at what is happening inside, um, inside the superconductor, because that is slightly different, because uh, we have um, Buckel-Yubov quasi-particles inside the superconductors, but only electrons and holes are tunneling. Yeah. <laughs> Before you move on, there was a question from Milan. Yeah. Uh, that uh, you may, I can read it from the chat. So you mentioned that you have several transmission channels. Is this also the case for these measurements? Uh, and what is the transparency of the junction? Um, okay. Uh, uh, okay, here uh, we have um, the um, um, yeah, so we have uh, the trans transmission through the Shiba state, uh, which is one transport channel. There is only one uh, level, so we cannot really have more than one transport channel through the Shiba state. Uh, and then we have the, um, uh, uh, the coherence peaks, which indicate that there is a, a second transport channel, or maybe more, yeah, th th this we cannot say, but there is at least one more transport channel uh, through an empty gap, yeah, which will not contribute to the, um, uh, to this Shiba Shiba tunneling because there's no density of states inside the gap for that, yeah. So uh, uh, this part can be nicely separated. Here outside in the normal conducting regime, uh, we basically measure all transport channels together, yeah, because they all have a, a density of states inside, uh, outside the gap, yeah. So th this is difficult to, to separate, but inside the gap, we can nicely separate these, yeah. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thanks. And the overall transparency of the junction, is it, is it, uh, I'm just, I'm surprised that there are several, that you have several challenges, but 
channels, but on the other hand, I'm not used to to these uh, fancy Shiba Shiba tunneling. So, are you at very low junction resistances or at uh, high ones? Yes, actually, we are very low. It it will become there. There are some okay. conductance axes later on. This, uh, right now, it's not so important, but I, I will show. You. So cool. we are at extremely small uh, okay. uh, transparencies. Okay. Yeah. But this does not mean we can only have one transport channel. Yeah, so we can have several transport channels even at uh, very low uh, transparencies. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, where was I? Ah, yeah. Okay. So um, here we have um, uh, the density of states picture with uh, electrons and holes here, uh, and this is quite convenient for um, uh, uh, for understanding what is happening uh, in the tunneling process because we see the overlap of electron part and hole part and then we have the uh, transport between electrons and holes um, but inside the superconductor we have Bogolyubov quasi particles and they are superpositions of electrons and holes so what we see in this density of states picture is a projection of these Bogolyubov quasi particles onto the electron and hole space and um, uh, this uh, 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 yeah, this this is convenient for for the tunnel junction for 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 um, uh, understanding the the transport through the tunnel junction, but it does not tell you what is going on inside the superconductor, because um, there are only electrons tunneling and holes, if you will. Yeah, but not Bogolyubov quasi particles. So, in, if we want to understand what is happening inside the uh, superconducting, in the, inside the superconductors, we have to go to an excitation picture where we have the ground state here, where uh, all the Cooper pairs are, yeah, at zero energy, and then we have an excited state uh, at epsilon, which is where the uh, Bogolyubov quasi particle is from the Shiba state, and then we have at delta the continuum starts, which is the gap edge here. And then we have a Shiba state in the tip and the sample. Now, when we transfer a, transfer an electron across the junction, we actually have to take this, we have to split a Cooper pair because there are no other quasi particles around. Yeah, everything is condensed into Cooper pairs. So we have to split this Cooper pair. And what happens is that actually one half of the Cooper pair tunnels, it excites the Shiba state on the other side. And the second half of the Cooper pair actually excites the, um, is excited, <coughs> sorry, into the, Shiba state that we have uh, on the same side. Yeah. So I did not make this up. You can actually calculate this if you uh, look at how uh, Bogolyubov quasi particles are composed. They are linear combination of uh, electrons and holes here, uh, and with the coefficients u and v, which are also called coherence factors. So if you now calculate, if you take your tunneling Hamiltonian with the um, electron uh, creation and destruction operators here in the sample and the tip, uh, you uh, can calculate this in terms of your Bogolyubov quasi particles. And then you will find you get actually four terms. Uh, these three terms we will ignore because we are at low temperatures. So these terms only become significant if you have uh, thermally excited quasi particles, which we don't. So uh, the only term that is left over is uh, this first term, and this actually says that when we transfer an electron across, we excite a Bogolyubov quasi particle in the tip and in the sample. So, um, <coughs> um, so what happens now uh, if we look at the, um, uh, the electron has transferred? We uh, both Shiba states are excited. Now uh, the um, these states, these excitations have to relax into the ground state before the next electron can tunnel because we only have one energy level available. And uh, this can happen by uh, the Shiba state in the sample relaxing first and then the tip or the tip state relaxes first and then the sample state. Yeah? And only then uh, the next electron can tunnel. Yeah? So um, uh, we really are uh, uh, the lifetime of these Shiba states becomes very important in the tunneling process. So if we move now the tip and the sample closer together, we increase the coupling between these two Shiba states. And what happens now, um, if uh, the coupling becomes uh, stronger and stronger, the probability also increases that uh, the electron that just tunnels actually tunnels back uh, into the ground state. So there's no charge transfer and there's the onset of basically of a coherent coupling 
uh, between these two energy levels. Yeah, um, and uh, this experimentally we would see this that we uh, uh, have a transition from a linear regime where the system has time to relax before the next electron wants to tunnel to a sublinear regime where we can have higher order uh, 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 tunnel uh, events by uh, tunneling back and forth between um, uh, 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 through the junction yeah and this this reduces the charge transfer because uh, if we have an even number of events, then there's no charge being transferred. If we have an odd number of events, then a charge is being transferred. <clears throat> so this is actually what we can see. And we have the very unique situation now that um, our, um, um, our process is actually nicely uh, uh, localized in energy. Yeah? Um, because the relevant quantity now is the area under the peak, so the spectral weight. Yeah, and since this is an isolated feature, uh, we have the unique possible opportunity to actually calculate this area. This is not usually possible, uh, and in this way, um, we can actually um, um, filter out the uh, uh, the. Uh, the processes uh, uh, that happen during the tunneling process itself, yeah, the interaction with the environment, uh, uh, fluctuations, and so on, because uh, whatever happens in the tunneling process is a probability that is normalized, so the area doesn't change across the tunnel junction. Yeah. Um, Christian, before yeah. you go on, okay, no, there's a question from Alexis Baratov on the chat. I'm sorry yeah. it took a while for me to take this, but he's, he was asking that. How do you create an oxygen vacancy at the tip apex? Uh, um, okay, I, uh, uh, we don't create oxygen vacancies at the tip apex. Um, uh, it is not uh, that easy. Actually, we don't exactly know what we have at the apex of the tip that creates this Shiba state. Um, this is basically all I can say. We, we, we suspect that we have maybe some oxygen atom or oxygen carbon complex uh, in a, a, um, um, uh, some structural uh, proximity to the to the vanadium and uh, but which in the end basically produces a free spin yeah <clears throat> but uh, this is basically all i can say we don't exactly know what is happening at the tip that produces this shiva state <clears throat> okay so um uh, but we know it's there because we see, we see the Shiba state. Um, so um, yeah, so by by evaluating the area, we can uh, filter out uh, all the the processes that happen during the uh, during the tunneling, and uh, we can plot that as a function of normal state conductance. Yeah. So these are really small values. We are uh, this is normalized to G naught. So this is the the, the basic transmission. Um, and uh, uh, these transmissions are very small because the, the lifetime actually is quite long in these Shiba states. So we have um, the linear regime here, which is also shown by this dashed line um, here in this blue part. And let's look at the linear regime first. We, uh, I will show you in the following uh, the smallest um, set point that we have ever measured, which is at uh, 0.18 femtoamps uh, at 4 millivolt bias voltage. Yeah? So this is really, really small and pretty much at the detection limit that we can, that we can um, possibly measure. Um, uh, because you see this is, this is the, 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 the noise limit um, between plus minus 0.5 femtoamps. And we can still see um, uh, these Shiba Shiba peaks here. Yeah? So the, the tunneling resistance is actually 22 tera ohms, which is 22,000 giga ohms. So really, really large. Yeah? Uh, this is 10 orders of magnitude from uh, G naught away. <coughs> we still see this. Yeah? So this actually tells us that this tunneling process is actually quite efficient. At one femtoamp, we have about 6,000 electrons tunneling per second. So uh, this is really sequential. Yeah? But if we increase the tunnel coupling now, we actually quite quickly already at 10 to the minus 8 G naught, we actually already start uh, bending towards a sublinear regime here. And this is um, where we see the onset of this, uh, this coherent coupling. Yeah? 
this is we haven't quite I mean, this is this is an indication. We haven't quite uh, uh, proven this. So the next step would be to actually see if we can see uh, Rabi oscillations by exciting this with a with a microwave. This is what we haven't done yet. This is on the to do list. But I think this is already a nice indication that that we that we do have the onset of a coherent coupling between these two Shiva states. Now, at this transition point, we actually see um, we can directly calculate the lifetime of the combined Shiba states here uh, uh, from the Shiba Shiba peak area. And doing that, we actually get a lifetime of 48 nanoseconds, which is actually quite long, uh, considering that we have not really optimized our superconductor for reducing uh, quasi-particle poisoning and so on. That actually limits the uh, lifetime of these Shiva states in, in, in the superconducting gap. OK, so. Um, you can see what I said in the beginning that uh, it is extremely difficult and it takes quite some effort to uh, isolate oops, sorry your um, to isolate your uh, uh, quasi particle levels so much from the environment that you can actually even see this onset of a coherent coupling yeah what I didn't tell you is that these Shiba states are very close to zero. And in this way, we uh, uh, actually eliminate higher order relaxation channels such as resonant Andreev reflections and so on. If we have, if, if Shiba states are uh, closer to the gap edge, we actually have these relaxation channels, these additional relaxation channels and the, uh, uh, the intrinsic lifetime already changes by uh, at least an order of magnitude, uh, becomes smaller. Okay, so uh, to summarize this part, we have uh, these. We have introduced this Shiba Shiba tunneling, uh, and we could demonstrate the uh, transition from a sequential tunneling regime to a coherent coupling, to a emergent coherent coupling um, by uh, uh, increasing the hopping between them. So the next step would be to uh, see what happens when we do uh, Cooper pair tunneling. Yeah. So before I show the experimental data, I want to um, introduce you to the to the model and what we are looking for. So Cooper pair tunneling happens at uh, zero bias voltage. Yeah, uh, in the STM we have to apply a finite bias voltage because we have this dynamical Coulomb blockade. But uh, uh, for the modeling and for the understanding, it is actually sufficient to look at um, uh, the uh, zero bias voltage uh, situation. So since in the Cooper pair tunneling, we transfer two quasi-particles um, uh, across the junction, and we, we remember that only electrons can tunnel, we have uh, an intermediate step here. Yeah? So um, the Cooper pair on one side uh, splits and excites into a virtual intermediate state here, for which we actually don't really have the energy, but it's in a virtual intermediate state, so we can do it. Um, similar to, to what we had before. So uh, two quasi particles are excited. And then in the second process, um, with the second half of the Cooper pair tunnels across here. Yeah, so easy enough. So this is a phenomenology, phenomenological model, um, uh, but it serves our purpose. So now we place a Shiba state in the tip. Yeah, I place it in the tip because experimentally we have done this. It's works the same way in the sample, uh, but let's place it in the tip. And let's start with the screen spin regime. You remember from the beginning, we have the free spin regime and the screen spin regime, depending on the exchange coupling and on which side of this quantum phase transition you are on. So the total spin is zero, which is actually the same as um, we have for the uh, uh, Cooper pair tunneling that I showed you before. Yeah? So uh, the superconductor doesn't look any different uh, really to the uh, Cooper pair that wants to tunnel. So um, we go to the intermediate state and now instead of going to the continuum here, uh, uh, the first half the tunnels here goes into the um, uh, into the Shiba state and then in the second uh, step um, uh, the, the, the second half of the Cooper pair tunnels and we have the Cooper pair uh, across the junction, yeah? So the spin changes from zero to one half and back to zero. So something interesting happens uh, in the free spin regime because now we have this impurity spin uh, in the ground state so that the total spin of the um, uh, tip is one half. So impurity plus superconductor. Now the first half of this Cooper pair tunnels and um, uh, goes into the excited state here and here. 
Yeah, so we have the virtual state, and uh, now the excited Chiba state, the excited state in the free spin regime is the same as the ground state in the screen spin regime, so the spin uh, will be zero. And there is a coupling between this impurity spin here and the excited Chiba state. And this is uh, different from what we had in the previous picture here. Yeah, so we have a spin coupling here, so there's a connection between the impurity spin and the excited Chiba state here. And uh, in the second half, uh, because we have this coupling, the um, excited Shiba state couples to a Kupa pair with uh, 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 with the impurity spin, and then we have the impurities the, the Kupa pair here, and the second half of the Kupa pair tunnels across into the impurity spin here. So the difference here is now that uh, the order has changed uh, from spin up, spin down to spin down, spin up. Yeah, this did not happen in the screen spin regime. The order stayed the same. Yeah, and by changing the order of the fermion operators, we actually introduce a sign change. Yeah, because changing operators uh, introduces a sign change. And in the Josephson effect, this means that the supercurrent is actually reversed. Yeah, flows in the other direction, and uh, this is also known as a pi junction because the phase shifts by pi and this introduces the sign change. Now, I did not make this up. Christian, yes? I interrupt you here before you move on. So there's again a question from the audience. Yeah. And I think it's also for, for the previous slide, so not only this one, but Juan yeah. Carlos can, can correct me if I'm wrong. So I read it out. So he's asking, where do you think the quasi-particles relax to, given that the Shiva states are so well isolated? Is it to a metallic reservoir? Or, or by boson absorption, absorption, sorry. Uh, this is a bit unknown. There are several possibilities. So you have um, uh, one possibility would be to recombine with uh, other quasi-particles that happen to be floating around, yeah? So, um, uh, uh, and uh, this this is not really specified any any closer, but uh, the, the reason, um, um, how, how should I say that? Uh, we actually have to break parity. Yeah, we have to change the number of particle, the, the odd even number of particles, uh, and this this is what isolates this uh, uh, the Shiba state and increases the lifetime. Yeah, so it is not easy to relax these, but there is always some kind of still a quasi particle floating around um, that can uh, uh, relax the. Uh, uh, the, the excited Shiba state, yeah. So this is this is uh, basically an analogy to to this Dines parameter that that fills the gap a little bit, yeah. So this is very phenomenological. We don't exactly know what this process is, but um, uh, it actually turns out that if you introduce a, a Dines parameter into your um, uh, superconducting gap, this is exactly what gives the uh, finite lifetime to your Shiba state. So in in the model there is a connection, but uh, in 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 reality, yeah, this relaxation process is a bit um, more complex, and and this is actually something that we still need to understand. Okay, so um, going back to uh, this. Uh, um, um, exchange of fermion operators here. So I did not make this up. Uh, this was uh, already discussed uh, uh, in uh, in the 90s by Spivak and Kivelson and uh, experimentally seen in uh, quantum dots that are coupled to superconducting leads in 2006 in the Kovenhof Kovenhofen group. Um, and uh, uh, they use a, a, a very similar picture which we have adapted now to, uh, to the Shiba states. Um, so how do we actually experimentally demonstrate this? Because this is not so easy, because in order to demonstrate this convincingly, we would have to use uh, uh, the same tunnel junction with the Shiba state in there that moves across the quantum phase transition while we are able to measure the Josephson effect at the same time. Yeah? So, and there's um, a nice phenomenon uh, that what happens uh, when you have, for example, now in our case, a Shiba state at the tip, an impurity at the tip, you approach the sample, you actually have atomic forces uh, that pull on this impurity and this, uh, this atomic force, these, this pulling force changes the impurity substrate coupling uh, to the tip and this changes 
the energy of the Shiba state. Yeah? So by changing the conductance, so the, the tip sample distance, we also change, we can change, that doesn't always happen, but we can change uh, the uh, energy of the Shiba state. Yeah? So we call this moving Shiba states, and this has been um, uh, demonstrated by us and, and before that uh, by a number of other paper, paper people and groups. Uh, I think it was interpreted by Katharina Franke uh, here in this PRL. Uh, also, Markus Tannis has seen this a long time ago uh, before uh, most people were, were working on uh, Shiba states. Um, so this is a, a phenomenon that happens actually quite frequently in a number of different uh, settings, and we will use this now uh, to demonstrate this. We actually found uh, uh, um, in these, these um, vanadium tips, we found uh, a system that shows a Shiba state that moves across this quantum phase transition that you can see here. This is the Shiba state. It does not cross because we have the sample gap here. We have a superconductor superconductor junction, so they are apart by the sample gap. Um, but this is the quantum phase transition here, which is shown by a, a, a dashed line. And now we have the um, uh, coherence peaks here. They are very weak because this, in this part, uh, in this system, the um, Shiba states are very dominant. And, uh, and we are able actually to see the Josephson effect throughout this uh, data set here. It's very weak, so we cannot see it in this data set here in the, in the DIDV, but uh, we can observe it if we zoom into this part. Yeah? So the Josephson effect in the um, STM looks uh, like that. Uh, we have this, uh, this peak structure here, uh, asymmetric spectrum around zero voltage here. It looks a bit noisy, but if you look at the um, current here, it's is about 300 femtoamps, so the, uh, the current is also not very big. Uh, you see this wiggle here. And in the model, actually, uh, it turns out that um, in this dynamically Coulomb blockade regime, the uh, overall Josephson effect is proportional to the square of the critical current. And the critical current is actually uh, the quantity that we're interested in, which is what changes the sign in, the, um, in this process. So now we measure this as a function of conductance. Here, we, uh, this uh, spectrum from, previous slide, from the previous slide you see is exactly here, between plus minus 60 uh, microvolts, and then uh, we plotted the same spectra at different conductances here in this um, uh, plot here, and the conductances at, um, uh, on the x-axis here. So, and you see that as we increase the conductance, the uh, Josephson effect increases here and here, but in the vicinity of this quantum phase transition, actually something very funny happens because it the, the, the doesn't really change. It even in, it seems like it's uh, reducing a little bit. Yeah. So, um, you can already see from the spectra that something is happening. Uh, to do this more quantitatively, we actually take the maximum here, which we call the switching current, and plot this as a function of conductance. So this is on the, um, on the x and the y axis on the left here. The blue spectrum shows the switching current as a function of conductance. And you see that it has a nice square dependence far away from the quantum phase transition here and here. Uh, but in the vicinity of the quantum phase transition, something funny happens. Yeah? And you see that this is the quantum phase transition because the um, uh, energy of the Shiba state is shown as the red line here uh, on, the, on the right axis with a minimum here uh, at this quantum phase transition. Yeah? So in order to analyze this, we plot this slightly differently. We take the square root of the switching current, which is then proportional to the critical current and uh, multiply by the normal state resistance. And then we get this nice step function, yeah? So which is constant, uh, far away from the junction, uh, but changes uh, significantly, uh, it's actually almost by a factor of two across the junction here. So, and this is, I will show you in the following, this is actually a signature of uh, a transition from a zero junction to a pi junction. So how can we understand this? Um, now we have to go back and look at the uh, sensitivity to, uh, to the phase and uh, uh, how, how the SDM is sensitive to the phase. We have two transport channels, one through the BCS gap that is empty. We see these peaks, they are weak, but they are there. And then there's a second channel through the YSR, uh, YSR uh, state. And as we now change the 
um, tip sample distance, we uh, move this quantum, we move the YSR state through the quantum phase transition, but nothing really happens to the BCS gap. So we use the BCS as a reference junction. And the, uh, the Josephson effect actually will be the combination of these two channels, yeah? because the phase across the junction is actually the same for both channels. So how, how does that work? Um, um, Christian, sorry for yeah. interrupting. There's one question in the chat, which is yeah. uh, if there's a cusp in the Yushi Varusin of energy at the quantum phase transition, and whether if you see a jump in the asymmetry between the positive and negative bias voltages as one would expect for a quantum phase transition. If I see a jump in the... A jump in the asymmetry between the positive and negative bias oh, voltages. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, we, we, actually, we don't see this, uh, which doesn't mean that there is uh, no quantum phase transition because uh, uh, our lifetime is actually so long, and we, we have looked into this, um, that at these conductances, which are actually quite high, uh, we are already in this uh, resonant Andreev reflection or in this Ande resonant Andreev process regime, uh, which completely distorts these, uh, this asymmetry. Yeah? And uh, so this uh, uh, is, is, we, we did not observe this uh, change in the... Um, in the conductance, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in this asymmetry there. Yeah? But this does not mean that, the, uh, 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 that this quantum phase transition is not there. Um, OK, so now um, a, a typical, because I, like I said, the, the phase across the junction is uh, constant. Um, we can calculate the uh, energy phase relation for the BCS uh, gap and for the Shiba gap. Yeah, for this YSR state. And they are shown here in red and in blue. And for the Josephson effect, only the amplitude of this modulation is relevant. So we can plot them uh, together here. Uh, and uh, in this uh, image here, we have uh, basically, they have the same phase um, here. So when we add them, uh, they uh, basically interfere constructively. So because they are in phase. Now, if this Shiba state moves across the quantum phase transition, the lower branch go, moves up and the upper branch moves below. So this uh, corresponds to a sign change because now uh, the, the upper part is, is on the lower half. And uh, this corresponds to the lower situation now. And we have a pi shift of the phase, a sign change. And uh, adding these two um, energy phase relations or these two contributions now, results in a sign change and a different amplitude. Yeah? So uh, the problem is now that we are still not sensitive to the sign in the, uh, in the Josephson effect because the um, Josephson effect in the STM is proportional to the square of the uh, uh, critical current. But um, we are certainly sensitive to a change in amplitude, yeah? And the amplitudes here and here are certainly different. And this is actually what we observe here, yeah? So in the lower part here, we have constructive interference. And in the uh, higher conductance, when we move across the um, quantum phase transition, we have destructive interference. And this changes the, um, uh, uh, the, the amplitude of the, of the Josephson effect. So the question is now is, uh, we have a zero junction here and a pi junction on this side. Um, uh, can we have an independent confirmation that we are here in the screen spin regime and here in the free spin regime? So to do that, we actually move, uh, uh, we take exactly the same junction, apply a magnetic field and see what the condo effect says. Yeah, so we- Sorry, Chris, yeah. about five minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, yeah that's fine, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Cool. Um, uh, so we, uh, uh, we measure the condo effect and uh, the half with the half maximum uh, is an indication of the, is, uh, directly related to the condo temperature, which is act, again related to the impurity, the, so, so to, to, the, to the exchange coupling. So uh, which decreases now as we increase the conductance, this means that the exchange coupling decreases, which means that uh, as we move across the quantum phase transition, we are actually, um, moving from the screen spin regime to the free spin regime. Yeah? And this fits very nicely to what we have observed here. 
uh, what we expect. The, we have uh, the screen spin regime here at low conductance, which induces the uh, zero junction, and the screen, the free spin regime, uh, induces the pi junction. And this uh, uh, fits very nicely. So in this way, we have uh, basically demonstrated uh, what this quantum phase transition is actually all about, uh, which is the change in the spin and the corresponding change in the um, uh, sign of the supercurrent in the Josephson effect. So uh, we can make a connection back to the beginning. Uh, we have exploited the interference uh, of the two transport channels uh, to, to get a reference when we uh, move across the quantum phase transition um, uh, with a YSR state. And this is very similar to the squid geometry here, where we have a reference junction which doesn't change when we change our uh, quantum dot here in this experiment uh, in, in, in question and move across a quantum phase transition there. So uh, this moves these experiments a bit closer together and, and makes a connection between the uh, Im spin impurity uh, that produces the Shiba state and uh, uh, the spin in, in a single quantum dot. Um, so, and this brings me to the end. Uh, uh, we are interested in quantum limits here through uh, YSR states. The Shiba-Shiba tunneling uh, between two individual quasi-particle levels constitutes a new quantum limit for the minimal configuration for producing a tunneling current. Yeah, we have shown this emergent coherent coupling between these YSR states by really uh, uh, reducing the interactions with the environment to uh, as much as possible. And then uh, we have used a single YSR state inside the junction uh, and uh, exploited the impurity spin there to uh, trigger a zero pi transition by detecting the sign change through a squid-like geometry and uh, introducing a rudimentary phase sensitivity in the STM. And uh, with this, I want to thank you for your attention. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Christian, for this uh, wonderful talk and for telling us about this uh, very interesting experiment. Uh, so now we have some time for questions. So if you have any questions, you can either write them in the chat or raise your hand in the participants button. And uh, let, let me start with one question that uh, has been written in the chat, which is uh, how is the spatial depend how the spatial dependence looks across the vacancy. So I suppose uh, it refers to the Yushiba Rusinov state? Uh, yes. Uh, well, the, the Shiba states, um, we have not looked at this in great detail, but uh, from what we can tell is that the Shiba states are actually quite localized uh, around this impurity. Yeah. So there's, we usually don't observe any oscillations away from this. Uh, so they are really much localized within uh, a few angstroms around the impurity. Yeah, thanks a lot. So now there's one question by Milan. Milan, please go ahead. So I, I'm impressed how how detailed and clean all, all your data is. So it's very nice. Thank you. You you mentioned something in the beginning about about stable phase, uh, and then of course in the end you did all this stuff that is compared to to squids. So if you wouldn't have in your best Josephson junctions that that you know are also stable in phase. What is the time scales of the phase stability between tip and sample? If we now ignore the, the YSR state. Um, okay, a stable phase is, is, is a dangerous term in this sense because the phase is really not stable. The phase is constantly fluctuating. We are in this dynamic Coulomb blockade mm -hmm. regime. So uh, we actually have to look at the phase quantum mechanically. So it is not well defined, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, what, what we, what, what we think now is that uh, we can assume uh, that the phase doesn't change much within one tunneling event, yeah, which is on the time scale of I don't know, fem to seconds or so. Yeah, but yeah? But, but that that is what I, I was wondering. Why is it one tunneling L, one tunneling event? Wouldn't it be a little longer? You know, you you're right, of course, that it fluctuates a lot. But is it really so fast that it's only one tunneling event? Uh, okay. Um, it. Honestly, I cannot exactly tell you. Uh, okay, the fluctuations are on, the, I would say, gigahertz scale. So they are probably on the order of nanoseconds, um, <clears throat> uh, give or take a bit. Uh, so they may be a bit more stable than, um, um, uh, than, uh, uh, than, than, 
within one tunneling event. Yeah, but you have to also uh, look at the time between um, tunneling events. Yeah, um, uh, because if if you have well, okay. Uh, at, at one nanoamp, you have a billion electrons tunneling per second, uh, which also gives a nanoscale, a nanosecond scale uh, between tunneling events. Yeah, um, and this is maybe the the the, the time scale at which we have to uh, look at these fluctuations. Yeah. Um, so. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult. But okay, for, for for us, it's sufficient if if we have this uh, stability within one tunneling event. Yeah, I think we get in trouble if we cannot assume that anymore. Yeah, but between events, there there may be a long time between two tunneling events, and this is when when this phase coherence gets lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, I, I, I wouldn't complain if it stays a little bit longer, uh, but I, I cannot say this uh, yeah. for sure. But you yeah. also don't have evidence against it, right? Like, I mean, exactly. you're right that you know that it's at least it's 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 stable for, for your measurement, but it could also be longer, right? That this is exactly. Am exactly. I wrong? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So innocent until proven guilty, basically. Thanks. Um, there's another question by Abdu. Abdu, please go ahead. Okay, hi Christian. So, hi. Uh, so uh, can you do the same experiment by rather ma manipulation? So instead of having the vacancy on the tip, and you change the coupling between uh, the vacancy by manipulation, for example, you reduce the distance and so on. Um, um, is that is that have you have you thought about it uh, doing in um, that? Way? In, uh, yes, in principle, we can do this on the surface again with these imp intrinsic impurities on the surface. Yeah. It does happen, but uh, it happens much less frequently than uh, for the tip. So we just found that uh, it is easier to do on the tip, but it also works on the sample. Okay. Yeah. But the, the, okay, for us, the, the I mean, this happens a lot more often than than when the, than we than we think. Uh, uh, but in in these particular experiments, we had so many boundary conditions to move across the quantum phase transition while we observe the Josephson effect that there's only very few of these uh, impurities that qualify for for these experiments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, it, it's it's a much more general effect that happens a lot more often. Yeah. I think there was similar kind of, uh, you know, thought experiment like on carbon nanotubes where you have really like one, one single channel and using the proximity effect. Mm -hmm. um, I remember Pablo was doing something similar, but uh, it wasn't with magnetic impurity, of course, on the nanotube, where you can control the channel, of, of course, on the carbon nanotube. And you can, of course, have gate where you can shift the states as well. I mean, the position of the, in this case, the Shiba states. So um, I don't know <laughs> what is next actually for, for this guy. This is exciting data, of course, and it's, uh, but it probably it would be complicated to apply it on device itself. Like you have uh, an, an nanotube across uh, superconducting electrodes and you have a spin uh, states, uh, whether inside the tube or on the top of the tube. Uh, well, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it, it would be an entirely different experiment. Yeah, I, I have tubes that have a spin inside. Mm -hmm. So if you would, <laughs> if you like uh, to try, <laughs> uh, I mean, it is it is quite interesting, and I have a proof that what you have inside, it's a it's a you know quantum magnet, right? And it's quite isolated, and you might find some are are passivated, but you see also some that individual. So. Uh, I don't know if it is, yeah, if it's interesting to, to do it that way, it could be really uh, a nice uh, experiment. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, because that, 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 that there have been some experiments, um, some transport experiments in, in this direction with uh, coupling to superconductivity yeah. with, uh, in, in this quantum dot regime. Uh, mm -hmm. And there, the, the coupling is a lot weaker, and the, this impurity or this carbon nanotube substrate superconductor coupling is uh, on the order of the uh, on, uh, of the order parameter of the gap, yeah, okay. and then you enter an entirely new regime, which is also quite interesting, I think, because mm -hmm. there you can get subgap states without magnetic impurities, uh, so with non-magnetic impurities, and, mm -hmm. and so on. So uh, it would be interesting to see this connection 
um, uh, from this uh, low coupling regime to this strong coupling regime where we see the Shiva states. So there, I, I think the parameter space is actually quite big, no. but not very well uh, studied. Yeah. No, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Thank you. I think now would be a good time to, to stop the official part. So I propose that we will stop the recording. Thank Christian again, but please don't immediately vanish somewhere. If there are more questions, we can still have some more, some more discussion. But let's thank Christian for a really nice, nice talk and, and we'll stop the official part here. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you.